When you are buying or selling crypto on an exchange like Coinbase or Binance, you will need to place an order. But the problem here is that you will see terms like market order, limit order, stop order, and stop limit order. These terms are very confusing to many people, not just beginners, but it is very important to understand them. So you can choose the correct order type based on what you really want to do. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, we will explain market orders, limit orders, stop loss orders, and the stop limit orders. We will explain the difference between them and when you should use each one of them. So, let's get started. So, what is an order type at the first place? An order type is simply like instructions you give to the exchange on how you want to buy or sell crypto and at which price you want to execute your order. So, each order type is like a tool that has a specific purpose or use case. To understand this more clearly, let's start with market orders. So, a market order is the most simple order type. It is basically telling the exchange that you want to buy or sell crypto as soon as possible at the current market price. So, when you place a market order, you only need to state the amount you want to buy or sell, and your order will be executed immediately at the current market price. For example, if the current market price of Bitcoin is $25,000, and you place a buy market order for one Bitcoin, then your order will be executed immediately at $25,000. It is also basically the same with selling. If the current market price of Bitcoin is $25,000, and you place a sell market order, that means that you want to sell as soon as possible at the current market price. So, your order will get executed immediately at $25,000. An important point here is that the market price may change during executing your order. So, your order may be executed at slightly higher or lower than $25,000. And this is okay in the case of relatively stable coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum. But this is a big problem when you are trading smaller, more volatile cryptos, as the price can move by a lot in a very short time and the price you may get can be totally different than the price you were expecting when placing your order. This is one of the things you should consider before using market orders. So, to sum this up, a market order can be used when you want to buy or sell immediately, and you don't care that much about the price you get. Now let's get to the limit orders. So, we all know that the prices of crypto move all day. For example, in the morning the price of Bitcoin may be $25,000, and in the evening, it may be $26,500. So, what if you want to buy Bitcoin at $24,500 for example, but you don't want to keep an eye on the market all the time? Well, limit orders allow you to easily do this. A limit order is an order that allows you to set the maximum price you are willing to pay when you are buying or the minimum price you are willing to accept when selling. This maximum or minimum price is called the limit price and when you place a limit order, it will only get executed when the market price reaches the limit price. So, what does that mean? Let's see an example. Let's say that the current market price is $25,000 and you want to buy at $24,000. So, you place a buy limit order and you set the limit price at $24,000 because that is the maximum price you are willing to pay. After your order is placed, nothing will really happen and you will need to wait until the price of Bitcoin reaches $24,000, which is your limit price. Once this happens, your limit order will be executed at $24,000 or lower if possible, but you will never pay more than $24,000. If, for example, the price of Bitcoin rises and doesn't reach $24,000 at all, then your limit order will not be executed and it can stay like this for up to 90 days on some exchanges. So, a limit order basically gets you the price you want or doesn't get executed at all. Let's see a selling example. So, here the limit price is the minimum price you are willing to sell at. So, in our example, let's say that the current market price of Bitcoin is $25,000 and you want to sell at a higher price, let's say at $25,750. So, you place a sell limit order and you set the limit price at $25,750, which is way higher than the current market price. Once the Bitcoin price rises and reaches $25,750 or more, your order will be executed. But if the price stayed below 25750 your limit order will not be executed. 
So, as you can see, in a buy limit order, you need to set the limit price lower than the current market price. But in a sell limit order, you need to set the limit price higher than the current market price. An important point here is that if you place a buy limit order with a limit price higher than the current market price, then your order will be executed immediately at the market price. As the market price is already better than your limit price. Also, if you place a sell limit order with a limit price lower than the current market, then your order will be executed immediately at the market price as it is already better than your U low limit price. So a limit order will always get you the price you want or a better one if available. So you should consider it when you want to buy or sell at specific prices and you don't mind waiting. But keep in mind that if the price doesn't reach your limit price, your order will not be executed. The next type of orders we have is the stop order. A stop order is used to limit your losses when a coin is starting to decline in price, so sometimes it is called a stop loss order. A stop order can also be used when you want to buy only when the coin is beginning to rise in price. A stop order is basically buying or selling when the price reaches a specified price called the stop price. You may be thinking, isn't that the same as the limit order we just explained? Well, that is not true, they are actually pretty different. With a stop order you can set the stop price higher than the market price when buying or a stop price lower than market price when selling. So, it lets you do whatever you want and doesn't try to get you the best prices like the limit order. Let's see a sell stop order so you can better understand it. Let's say that the market price is $25,000 and you want to limit your losses when Bitcoin starts to decline in price in the future. So you place a sell stop order and you set the stop price at $23,000. That means that you want to sell your Bitcoins once the price reaches $23,000 to avoid more losses. Here in this stop order, you can set the stop price lower than the market price and your order will be activated once the price reaches $23,000. When that happens your Bitcoin will be sold at the market price which may equal $23,000 or close to it. So, the sell stop order once it gets activated, it basically turns into a market sell order and sells your Bitcoin immediately at whatever the market price will be at that moment. We will get to this point in more details in a minute, but now, let's see a buy stop order. So, a buy stop order is used when you want to buy when the price is showing some bullish signs. For example, if the market price is $25,000, and you think that if Bitcoin reaches $27,000, it will continue rising more and more. So, you want to buy only when Bitcoin reaches $27,000, but you don't want to keep an eye on the market all the time. To do this, you can simply place a buy stop order with a stop price set to $27,000. Once Bitcoin reaches that price, the stop order is activated and buys you Bitcoin at $27,000 or at whatever the market price is at that moment. So, the difference between a buy limit order and a buy stop order is that with a limit order, you are saying I want to buy at $27,000 or lower, like I want to pay a maximum of $27,000. So if you set the limit price higher than the market price, your limit order will be executed immediately at the market price as it is already better than your limit price. But with a buy stop order, you are saying I only want to buy when Bitcoin reaches $27,000 or higher. So you can set the stop price higher than the market price and your order will only be executed once the price reaches your high stop price. The opposite happens with sell orders. So in a sell limit order, you are saying I want to sell at $23,000 or more like I want to get a minimum of $23,000. So if you set the limit price lower than the market price, your order will be executed immediately at the market price as it is already better than your low limit price. But with a sell stop order, you are saying I want to sell only when the price reaches $23,000 or less. So you can set the stop price lower than market price and the order will only be executed when the price falls to the stop price. Remember when we said that once a stop order is activated, it changes to a market order and gets executed at the market price. Well, this can cause problems sometimes with highly volatile cryptos as the price may move too fast during the small time period between the activation of the stop order and actually executing the order. So sometimes, your stop order will be executed at a market price very far from the stop price you set when placing the order. A solution to this problem is using a stop limit order. A stop limit order gives you control on the price you will pay or get after your stop order is activated. It is basically a stop order that once it gets activated, it places for you a limit order with your specified limit price. So, here you need to set two prices, a stop price and a limit price. The stop price is the price that will trigger the placement of a limit order, 
and the limit price is the price you will actually pay when buying or get when selling. Let's see an example, so you can better understand it. Let's start with a sell example. So, imagine that the current market price is $25,000, and you think that if Bitcoin reaches $20,000, it will continue declining. So, you want to sell once it reaches $20,000. So, you place a sell stop limit order with a stop price set at $20,000 and a limit price set at $19,750, which is lower than the stop price, and this is done to make sure that your limit order gets executed. If you set the limit price very close to the stop price, your limit order may not get executed if the price moves down too fast and you're gonna need to wait for the price to go up again to reach the limit price. So the stop price is the price at which the stop order will get activated to place the limit order and the limit price is the minimum price you will sell at. So when Bitcoin reaches 20,000 after a while, the stop order will be activated and a limit order will be placed with a limit price of $19,750 which means that your Bitcoin will be sold at 19,750 or more if possible, but you will never get less than $19,750. In the buying situation, it is like you are trying to catch a moving train. So you wanna buy when the coin shows signs that it will go on a bull run. For example, you may want to buy Bitcoin only when it reaches $27,000. So you place a buy stop limit order with a stop price at $27,000, and a limit price at $27,500. Here, we set the limit price higher than the stop as we think the price will go up. So, we are trying to catch it before it rises even more. So, once the price reaches $27,000, your limit order will be placed to buy Bitcoin at $27,500 or lower if possible. But if the price reached $27,000 and the stop order is activated, but after that the price went down again, before reaching $27,500, then your limit order will not be executed. The stop order and the stop limit order are very confusing to many people, so feel free to rewatch their parts until you understand them. But in summary, the buy stop is used to buy a coin before it goes on a bull run, and the sell stop is used to limit losses and sell a coin before its price declines even more. Once a stop order is activated, it gets executed at the market price, and sometimes the market price moves too fast with highly volatile cryptos. So you may need to use a stop limit order to have more control on the price you buy or sell at. At the end of this video, we really hope you learned what you need to know about crypto order types. And if you liked our video, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.